It's your boy Crypto Blood and welcome to part two with Jane Bond, the mystery trader. We had a great time. Part two is going to be even better than part one. So check it out, guys. Hope you enjoy. And uh, of course, make sure you hit that thumbs up. If you want to see her back on the show, I do have a couple of things lined up for uh, for you guys with her in the coming weeks. So look out for that. Again, like, share, and subscribe. I'm out of here. Holla. The financial damage has already been done, and it's it's going to get worse. It's yeah. only going to get worse from here. Yeah, no, I, I hear you on that one. Um, I wanted to ask you uh, another question from Anthony uh, Gabriel. Uh, he says here, please, can you ask her what she thinks uh, will happen to the UK monetary system? Uh, I'm pretty sure. The UK, mon- you know what? I trade with a guy that's in London. And what's going on with the UK is not isolated from the EU. They're still in the dirty tentacles of the EU. Europe's fucking going down. Europe's you're going down. Pull UK with them. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I think the number one biggest trade that happened was shorting all the markets on this coronavirus crap. And I think the number two biggest trade would be shorting the euro dollar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I even have that that crap written down. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, I can see that. And I mean, definitely going under parity, right, with the dollar. Europe's next. I think underneath all this, Europe has been on the fringes so europe is probably why so the china's going, going down going. what it, yeah dude i seriously think the, the the whole repo thing it's connected to europe right it's me too that, that's where that's what i think the crisis is really in europe mm-hmm. i can see that 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 so we know the crises are in china and the emerging markets right we know that's already a shit show. So after that, what what are the last standing economies? The ones that can handle big capital flight, move money around kind of exchanges. That would be what Japan and Europe. Mm-hmm. And then after that, then after that, the last man standing is the United States. Right. Speaking of Japan, I think uh, Europe's going to go down. I mean, to answer your person, okay. your person's question, like the UK is not isolated to the EU whatsoever. And the U in the EU, they're so screwed. They're, you're, you're, I think within two two months, a big European bank is going to go down. I think that's going to be. A huge trigger in flight into the United States. Right. That could possibly place a bottom in USA equities in the bond markets. Okay. Because when you when you have that kind of capital coming in for safety, it doesn't matter what our shit show situation looks like here in the United States. Exactly. It's gonna push these markets up. Right. So it's right. so that could be the V bottom, <laughs> like right. Europe, Europe going down, few huge banks going down. That would be the bottom for the United States equities and mar- like bond markets. Hmm. I think. So I think uh, that I, I think, think just keep your eye on that. If that scenario plays out, I think though it's going to be a first a, a, a knee jerk reaction further down. Then, then hit. Oh, yeah, of course, off the news. Yeah, of course, off the news. It's going to go down another 20%, 20, 30% from wherever it is when that starts. So, this is really going to just, man, this is crazy. Uh, Speaking of, dude, it's really hard to research and keep like your head around all this because, okay, yeah, do you know, uh, do you remember the Billy Mays infomercials? Yeah. 
Okay, so when he comes out with his new little fantastical equipment thing, and then he's like, "Wait, there's more." Exactly. That's like tw- that's like 2020. Yeah. I just saw a meme on it. It's like every few seconds, 2020. <laughs> wait, there's more. <laughs> no, that's wow. how fast like things are moving. Like being a macro trader, like th- this is very difficult. <laughs> This is, this is very fucking difficult to be able to trade through these markets because you got to have an understanding of Forex, bonds, equities. Like, you got to have a grasp over what's going on in the emerging market. Like, this is, it's fun. I mean, it's fun. Make a lot of money. Can lose a lot of money in this. So Trust Truth says, uh, speaking of Japan, you mentioned Japan. Uh, he asks, uh, what do you think about Japan's economy and a foreseeable future forecast? He said, I know uh, there's a sh- there's a there's there are shots like a pyramid s- scheme waiting to crumble. What's the best flight intro or into? What's the best flight into? I'm not sure I'm following fully. I don't know if you got... Um, with the Japanese economy, obviously they've been in like this deflationary stagnant kind of thing. Um, years. but they, they are ahead in the technology and e-commerce. And they do have a homogenous culture and race there, which will, they'll be strong. The only vulnerability I see to Japan is commodity prices because they don't produce really anything. Like they, they import everything. So that that's the only thing that makes them vulnerable is if commodity prices take a spike, then they could probably they'll take a hit. Hmm. Okay. And then, but there's this, there's this other way of viewing it is that they got a good handle on the coronavirus and the whole shutdown crap first. I, I'm not yeah. sure if I said this in a previous like time that we talked, but it's like it, if I was sitting back as an international investor, I would be like, all right, who quarantined first? Because that's where I'm going to put my money first. Because they're going to get out of it first. Right, right. You, you see what I'm saying? So yeah, there's a this thing bit. with I, Japan. I agree, I agree to a certain extent because What do you I think about Japan? Um, Japan is, it is a safe zone, I think. Um, but I was going to say, speaking on your, your theory about first in last out or first in first out, um, I wouldn't use that strategy with China though, just because of the other uh, geopolitical factors. Yeah. You got to factor that in. But with Japan, are there those factors with Japan? No. Exactly. No, they're kind of neutral. They're in the middle with everything. Sing, you know, uh, north, so, uh, no, not north, South Korea, Japan, you know, but South Korea is kind of having, you know. I mean, we could have a discussion about economic geography, but I mean, that's what I wrote my dissertation in. Okay, nice. Well, I wrote my dissertation for Chile on okay. economic geography. That's what I studied when I was in college. Okay. Well, and I have, that's I what I'm saying, like, with just. <laughs> So, like, the issue with Japan is just the commodities thing. That, that, that's yeah. really it, is that they have to they have to import all their shit. Right. But, I mean, and the geopolitically... And get, uh, get weaker. It depends on the price of the dollar. See, see, see now, now we got to <laughs> <gotta, laughs> have a dollar. Now we got to have a dollar discussion. Yeah, this is insane. Like, this like is it's insane. head spinning. It's yep. head spinning, like, thinking about... What is really when it comes down to everything, it's what is the U.S. dollar going to do? Can the Treasury and the Fed suppress it? Because they got to keep it under 103 on the index. 
they they got to keep it under 103 because if this shit busts out and it keeps it keeps appreciating that's when we run into the EM sovereign defaults that's when we run into commodities spiking up but we See, would go that, above. That goes down but to look, the price look, of oil. But, but Trader Jane, we would go above 103 if we have a Deutsche Bank go under. If we have any type of yep. issue in the EU, yep. you're gonna have yep. all that flight to cap. Uh, flight, this flight to safety is the U.S. dollar yep. and, and Treasury bonds. <laughs> See, then so then like, that's where that trade comes into play, where it would be the second greatest trade of 2020 would be to short the euro. Oh, like. Well, wait. But wait, there's more. There's more. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta ask. So you, you know what that yeah. big oil move? Yeah. Oh, I man. don't honestly. I don't know what the fuck that was about because well, today? you're talking about today. I'm talking about the last. I'm talking about the last two days. Oh. So down, you, you, no, 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 three. The, we'll say the last three days. Cause you had Trump saying, well, today "Oh, he came I ran, I ran, I ran." Might come at us with a fucking sneak attack. It's like, are you just trying to pump oil right now? No, 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 is no, is but, that but, what's okay. going on? Uh, and but, then you have, oh, we're against the Mexican cartel. We're we're gonna build up our force, you know. And then it was that a wait, pump on oil? But wait, or, there's more. <laughs> Boar, what or? <laughs> Are, are the oil prices going up because investors know inflation's coming in? So when inflation's coming in, you run to fucking commodities. I don't know. Pull up a fucking copper chart. Honestly, if we really want to get dig down into this, what's copper Dr. doing? Dr. Copper. Like, I don't know. Dr. Copper. Okay, yeah. but, look, but look, today, I don't know if you knew today, uh, crude oil was up 30%. 40 almost 40 percent intraday yeah that's what i'm saying but that like, was because of what? trump he came on again today and and, and he actually he called uh, joe kernan from cnbc he called him first what so the you know fuck? you know oh trump you know trump is trying to pump something <laughs> so he calls joe kernan and tells him that uh he talked to the saudis and he talked to putin again today and he said that they're both going to lower or increase output by uh, 15 million yeah. barrels or so something. I don't I don't know exactly. I fucking heard that. Okay, okay. I want to know, did Russia or Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia say yes? No. We confirm. No, exactly. No. Dude, exactly. Like, are we caught up in another meme trade war cycle? But now it's the oil cycle of Trump of like, you are here. Like, I am sure you've seen those memes where it's like trade deal going good. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, G oh, yeah. says no, that's yeah. all lies. And then the market tanks. And then it's months. like, no, yeah. we're, we're coming to a resolution. Phase one. And then like the market pumps. And then it's phase like, oh, no, phase they're retaliating. The market goes down. <laughs> like, yeah. it, are we entering a new yes. oil meme I, cycle? I think, I think so, <laughs> because uh, the funny thing is you had uh, some commentators uh, come on after he said that later and just completely ripping that apart, like saying that this is impossible. They can't. Uh, the demand destruction is too far in, embedded into this oil uh, move down and they were just explaining I don't know a lot about oil but these individuals are fully aware of how the oil system the, the crude oil works and they said I trade oil not, okay so yeah. they said this is not going to ha happen they said it's so far gone it's impossible for anything to change dude if, if Russia nor Saudi Arabia came out and said yeah we're going to cut production down. It's a fucking meme. It's a fucking lie. <laughs> like, <laughs> was, was, was Trump in gasoline option calls and his friends, you know, a week ago? <laughs> like, it makes me question. <laughs> mm. Mm. So, uh... Um... You know, like you said, like, the demand... 
is so low. Yeah, no. I, I one, like one, how one of the oils. I forgot which one you since you trade you trade crude you you trade oil you you may know there's one type of oil I forgot what kind. It's not light sweet crude. It's some other one I've actually never even heard of. But it's selling at a at zero or negative. Like they're paying people to hold on to it to store it. So there's a negative basically a negative price on that type of oil it's just crazy i i, I don't know I, I don't i don't understand dude it's like the, the fucking world is shut down it is. yeah there's no demand mm -mm. Mm -mm. zero no. it's almost like another fed qe rocket launcher like let's see if this trillion dollars works <laughs> Yeah, man, I, I, if Russia nor Saudi Arabia came out and confirmed that Trump statement, it's bullshit. I mean, if, if Saudi Arabia came out and said, yeah, we're going to cut production, I don't even think that's going to work. <laughs> even if, even if it is confirmed. Yeah, you got, uh. One one company went filed. Uh, I don't know what they went bankrupt. They did a structured bankruptcy uh, last week. It's just bad. It's tumbling. It's it's, it's really out of control. Um, I do want to kind of stroke my precious metal uh, folks. Okay, out there. I got Their that ego. on the list. Yeah, let's talk about gold and uh, you know the 50, fifty cent. I don't know if you know this this Vix whale fifty cent. He's a legendary, infamous VIX, VIX trader or whatever. He's uh, he's saying that gold is now the right place to be for battles ahead. What are your thoughts? I know you said, uh, I think on the last time you called in, that you're now kind of looking at gold as uh, something as an attractive trade for you at least. Or is it a trade or is it something you actually want to purchase? Yeah, last time when I talked to you, I said I'm looking at an entry um, and, and, you know, SLV, GLD, okay, not okay. like physical. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And like last time I talked to you, I was out in shitty connection in the stick. So yeah. apologize for that. Yeah, um, so what I got so far is a shitload of mines are shutting down. Juniors and seniors? Both. Okay. And that... It's, I don't know abroad, but here in America, it's really hard to find physical and the yes, premiums, the premiums are exploding. And I put here the risk would be if there's more downside in the equities, then, you know, the margin call kind of thing, but it is holding nicely in this so it want it looks bullish it looks it looks bullish as fuck okay what what's your target you have a target short -term, oh like... easily easily 2000 R really? for gold what, easily 2000 time? 2000 before the end of the year i don't know which okay. month that's, that's but it'll be before the end that. of the year yeah i can see that yeah. Just because I see the price action with, you know, technical analysis, like it actually really is holding and building a base here. Okay. Okay. So even if equities do take another leg down, which fuck it's going to, mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's that tug of war of are people going to be selling it to make the margin calls or not? Oh, I, right, right. You know, I, you know what I mean? Jeez. So yep, the, that, yep. that's oh, kind man. of the... I forgot about that. They are. But maybe the demand for it can outstrip that sale for margin cover. There's the tug of war. Yeah, exactly. Like if you have mine shutting down, you can't find the physical premiums are fucking over like ten dollars mm -hmm. on silver i don't know what it is on gold i haven't checked that yeah there's a there there's a tug of war going on between reality and the paper markets definitely gotcha. but it is holding 
I mean, I'll, I'll give it that. But, I mean, if equities take another leg down, shit. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> But long, but going through the, the the rest of 2020, it's a hold. I'm not saying like you're gonna make ten baggers off of this trade. I mean, maybe two. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Gotcha. You know, which would, would you know what? I want to talk about crypto. All right. Oh. <laughs> oh. Man, I wish. I wish I had my soundboard set up for my live stream because I'd be firing off shots left and right on this one. Oh my god! Let's talk about crypto. okay, okay. Let's talk about crypto. I I don't think you know how I I never told you how I found your channel. It no, was no, I wanted to know that. Yes, I was going to ask you that question. Okay, I was okay. Ask you that question. So in my trading group, <clears throat> I got a guy. He has been way into crypto. He goes through legislation. He follows what's filed with the SEC. Like, this dude has written written books about it. He has his own YouTube channel on it. He's way into crypto, but, you know, he he trades with us. And that night, I was, you know, kind of getting drunk, and I was like, you know what? I want to see what crypto is doing right now. Mm-hmm. And then I was just typing in YouTube and that's how I find your channel. And then at that moment, it said that you're alive and then you're having that's a call in show. And, I, and then, then, and then I'm like, fuck it. I'll call in. That is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yo. That's, that's how I found your channel. Hey. Thank you, <laughs> just Google. drunk and my friend, Thank you, like, Google. Few, well, spewing you, off for about the, it for the drunk search search yeah because <laughs> if you were hey, Cause like, if you were if you were if you weren't drunk you wouldn't have clicked on me i tell you that much <laughs> that's fucking funny that's funny <laughs> so so, so uh, i crazy. i did i did some ta on crypto okay i talked with the guy i think <laughs> like before summer ends, Bitcoin's gonna hit nine thousand. Okay, I, yeah, yeah, I can see that, especially uh, with the having coming. I'm not sure if you understand how the having events uh, work in crypto. I don't hear shit about the having thing. No, that's important. Yeah, uh, but me... but I think there I think there's fundamentals behind this. Okay. I think this is playing into the capital flight theory. I think. There's some very wealthy people out there that are trying to get their money out because they're realizing we're in a global like depression. And I think it's kind of playing with the gold and silver markets. So I think your cryptocurrency stuff, I I think it's going to appreciate due to that. Okay, no, that's cool, but let me let me just add one more element in there because maybe that changes or adds another level of premium to your price. So in May, the halving for Bitcoin occurs, and what that is is essentially the miners are paid half the amount of coins they are paid right now to mine Bitcoin. When a pool or individual miner finds a block, solves a block on the blockchain they get x amount of coins well in may it goes down half to half the amount they get right now so essentially it puts a supply shock a 50 percent reduction in the inflation aspect of bitcoin which occurs in may i understand okay so maybe you know i guess there's that that element going into that May, but maybe, I do see, yeah. I do see some fun fundamental macro stuff like backing this. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. That's that's uh that's good to hear. I think uh I actually think that we're gonna head lower before we head higher. And oh simply, yeah, I agree. Okay. <laughs> simply because of again the similar things that we see with uh precious metals margin calls yeah think, that's uh, what i said yeah mm-hmm, <laughs> like yeah. if this market takes another leg down which i believe it will yeah 
yeah. you're going to see that. But I do see like strong buying and support no, at Bitcoin. these levels Bitcoin with Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Gonna, yeah, Bitcoin and with the metals. Uh, yeah, but Bitcoin is going to outperform the metals yet again by by orders of magnitude, in my opinion, in the next two to three years. So. Uh, let me get one more question in here and then we can finish up with any last notes that you may have had for tonight. Uh, really enjoyed right. you coming on. Let me see here. We got bit native says here. Um, she, he wants to ask you, do you see any new insight on why the banks stopped lending to each other in the overnight repo market back in September? Did they know this was coming and the government took time to plan it out so the banks could fatten up? before the chaos um we kind of talked about this yeah yeah we so talked we, about yeah, it i mean that, but if you want to add but i do i i do want to add i am working with some people on trying to really figure out why the repo market is freezing up why are those overnight lending rates like are really happening? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a very collaborative kind of person. Nice. Um, I'm, I'm still working out with my friends. <laughs> I, I did get to a point where I think that it may not be true, but these primary dealers, in foreign primary dealers, they have to put up collateral to do the swaps, like the, to get the dollars. Okay, so we know the game. There's a huge dollar liquidity shortage. Okay, I think everybody gets that now. And for them to get these dollars, they got to they got to put up collateral for it. And what I'm seeing is the Fed and the primary dealers going through the secondary market, they're asking for more and higher quality collateral. Mm. So we're seeing like the people that are asking for the, the dollars, either they don't have the higher quality collateral, they don't have enough of it, mm -hmm. Or they're kind of just saying, fuck it, we're not going to play this game. Mm. Okay. Interesting. I mean, I mean, to answer your person's question, I still don't know. I, I'm still investigating it. I mean, I, I've been studying monetary policy, how the treasury works, the inner mechanical plumbings of it for a decade and I'm still learning things every day. And in this last six months, so much has changed. Yeah, like right, right. looking, looking at what the New York fed is doing day to day. Like I have an Excel spreadsheet putting in like how much was auctioned off, how much was bought in, at what rate? Like, I have it tallied every day for the last six months. And I'm still trying to really figure it out. I, I really, that's a black hole kind of question because if, if you know the answer to that question, then you can make the trade of the fucking century. Mm. If you know, if you know exactly I, I don't what think is caused, exactly. Like well, oh, if well, you know exactly know. what, yeah. if you know exactly what institution is causing this repo issue, which it really is a liquidity issue. What really that's, a, that's causing a freeze of a distrust between international banks. I mean, if, if you know that answer, 
Did this is like a George Soros kind of trade. Right. Like right. The, this is a trade that will go into the history books. We, you know, instead of making a billion, you'll make a hundred billion. 100 billion. Ten, yeah, like, like like five like Soros, five man. years, five ten years from now, maybe we'll know what caused this. I think you're gonna but have right people, now, I think you're gonna have people right for the wrong reason or right by mistake because it's too com the system is too complicated. It's too complex of a system now. The, the the Federal Reserve and all these central banks have distorted markets so badly that no one knows. It's a black box. You really have to go into like the mechanical plumbing of the different accounts that the Federal Reserve holds, the reason why, who is tapping into it for how much and why, and then the games that the Treasury, Mnuchin, and Trump are playing, you, you have to like somehow have like proprietary data on this. Yeah, like, th this is something where I think at this point, the Fed knows who the black, like, duck is. Mm. I, I, I think, I think now the Federal Re Reserve knows the issue. Because I mean, they, I mean, at, I mean the reason the, why I say that every is... Day. Every day well, the, re the reason why I say that is because they came out with that they're they're tra they're changing their supplementary leverage ratio. Yes, I saw the that. SLR. So the way that that's calculated is you have tier one capital above. This is a division equation. So you have tier one capital divided by consolidated assets. And, and what they're doing is they're making changes to that leverage ratio and they put it out for a year. So what, what, what that means is before you held a certain amount of tier one assets, which is U.S. Treasuries and gold, and then underneath it, you had U.S. dollars and then whatever kind of assets. It could be corporate, God knows what. Mm -hmm. So what they're doing is, is they're making the ratio smaller. So what that means is that the primary dealers now don't really have to hedge their risk, ass their risk assets as much. Because the game that I played going in and out of, you know, um, the ETF TLT was every time the Treasury auctioned off bonds, I would short. Okay. Because it was adding more bonds into the system and, and like bonds trade like a commodity. Everyone thinks bonds trade according to the yield or according to the price action of equity, which wasn't true because I was figuring this shit out like eight, 10 months ago of how the bond market like really works and how auctions affect equity prices. Mm. So what happened was, is when there wasn't really enough U S treasuries out there, to be able to buy because everyone all the primary dealers are scrambling for u.s treasuries because the more u.s treasuries you have the more you can leverage in equities so now Trump powell is saying fuck the u.s treasuries it doesn't matter how many you hold we're going to get rid of that regulation of the ratio. Now, now you can leverage to the tip. We don't care. That's what just happened. 
like not to like within the last week. Yeah. Yeah. So that would, that would be really, that would be equities positive. That would be bullish as fuck for equities. But that, 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 that's just another, <laughs> it, it's just like another, uh, it's yeah. like, a, it's another attempt of them to pump up the equities market. And who knows if that's going to work. Yeah. But I mean that that was a real mechanical plumbing change mm. that could have positive effects on the equities market. Because you you, you got to understand these in, institutional banks like they're held to Basel three. I'm not sure if you're right. yeah, educated on but, okay yeah. yeah this okay this this ratio I'm telling you is Basel three. They okay. they just threw Basel three out of the fucking window. As they always do. All these I said this in my video today. I said the rules are just made to be. They move the goalposts. That's all they have to do. They really never. Uh, there there never really are any any rules. Because when when shit hits the fan, then they just move the goalposts. I mean, look at Dodd that's Frank how you, that's how that you stuff. know how fucking desperate these times are. Yeah. That's yeah. that's how fucking desperate this is. Is Basel three is being thrown out. Of, it was just thrown out of the window. So now this new little ratio that they got going on, they said that's extended out for a year. Are you fucking kidding me? That that's going to be a forever thing. Of course, of course. So it, two, it's actually more. really equities fucking positive. <laughs> I got, no. two more, I got two more questions for you. Uh, while we're on the markets, uh, kind of that side of things, I've been watching the 10-year treasury yields, and All you're right. starting to head back lower. Is that what they want, or do they want to keep it in like a Goldilocks area of one and a quarter? One in, one in 10, you know. They where, want it lower. Where, where they, want they want it, it low. They want, well, they, it, want it they, they, they want it lower. They okay. they they want it lower because if the yields keep on rising like that, then you know the payments are more expensive. Yeah. So, but they don't want it too low though, right? They don't want the yield the whole curve to flatten, right? Or do they? Because remember when it was starting to hit the uh, 30 I think they do. nine basis points. They started But see the then this this plays into what what is the U.S. Treasury market going to do? Hmm. They want to they want to keep it low. I I, I seriously think they want to keep it low because the first time I called in, I don't remember who it was. It was an older gentleman. He was saying if yields spike, that's like pitchforks in the street, and he's right. He he he's right on that. If, if if our sovereign United States treasuries yield spike, pitchforks will be on the street. Yeah, that 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 is the consequence of that. No, they they they, they want to keep yields low. I, I. But then, but then, if the U.S. dollar, you know, that the U.S. dollar play that we're talking about, yeah, if Europe goes down. It's going to happen anyway. So then, so really the question keeps, all of this keeps coming back to what is the U.S. dollar going to do? Because everything is on the, on the back of that. Yeah, that it, this is insane. This is insane. It's just so complicated. It really is. So, last question before we get into your notes, if you had any last things you want to talk about, my mm -hmm. last question for you is this: this uh, Main Street bailout, this twelve hundred dollars, that that's not going to do anything for it. Well, it ain't doing nothing for me. I don't even think I can, I'll be able to get it. But uh, I'll definitely try to go for the Main Street, uh, the uh, small business loan crap. That I'm. You know, hey, they giving it out. I'm trying to get it. So, what's your thought on this situation? Like, is it going to cause inflation, or are people going to uh, hoard the cash, not really use it for anything other than you know necessities? What's your thought on this cash infusion, which 
to me is just a, this is a desperation move for them to give us cash main street cash there is a serious issue going on help help us out i did listen to um a, a recent podcast you did with like reggie and yes. another dude yeah, 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 yeah i'm with yeah. i i'm with reggie on this okay um it's it's not gonna do shit People are going to use that to buy essential goods and hoard it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I can't even get it because I haven't filed my taxes for years because I was like in Mexico and all over the fucking place. Yeah. So, I mean, okay, I'm, so I'm not going to, I know I'm not going gonna... to get it. Well, like you $1,200, $3,000 for a family. Are you fucking kidding me? Like people, people. <laughs> People aren't paying their rent. People aren't paying their credit cards. People aren't paying any of that. People are using that money to like buy food and essentials and public transportation. And they're putting it under their mattress for a rainy day because we're storming. Right. So is there going to be yeah, a this, second wave? Yeah, the stimulus is bullshit. <laughs> they're going to have to do a second wave. They call it phase four. I'm like, where the hell did phase three, two, and where did the other two phases i don't how are we well, on phase remember four? phase phase five like we're in phase no, I'm, four I, I, i'm saying I'm we're saying, in it no 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 what i'm saying is the why dc is is uh drawing up phase four of this bailout they're trying to do another one get another one ready to get the main street more money they're calling it phase four i'm like where did phase three and two go i never heard you talk about phase, those phases but anyway they're going to be looks like uh injecting more cash into the system here soon so my thing is initially no there isn't going to be any inflation from this but we know like everything uh once they get the printing they can't stop the problem is is the problem with the printing dude is that it it doesn't come out into the real economy well, all, all, the, all the fucking no, fucking it is so it's such a small amount it compared is. It is. to it all is. of it. Like, okay, out of out of their huge multi-trillion-dollar bailout thing, mm-hmm. a small percentage is actually being cut checks to the citizens. Let's yeah, be real is. here. Where where the fuck is the rest going? It's just being circulated around. We're into the banking system it, it's, it's being it circulated billion. around into the fucking banking system yeah. and it doesn't even get out to us so so there's the counter argument to inflation i'm on the fence i don't know if, if it's going to be deflation inflation or stagflation because the the fucking money printing most of that is being kept within the banking system it doesn't get out into the street Correct. So there's the argument to that. Like, will inflation happen? The 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 only way I can see inflation happening is if the Treasury goes fiscal and does some New Deal bullshit. We're gonna make another Mount Rushmore. And they're going to auction off a shitload of bonds to fund it. God willing, people will buy it. Hmm. Yeah, Yeah, that will be real. That will be real money creation. And that will hit Main Street. Hmm. But right now, the bullshit that they're doing with this, this stimulus stuff, it's only being majority circulated around in the banking system and we'll never touch it or see it. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, that's a good take on it. I, like I said, I think deflation first, then inflation. I think we're going into a deflationary spiral. I mean, if you look at it, right, you got asset prices from homes are going to head lower. Prices in homes, real estate going to head lower. You got corporate real estate is done. That's a disaster. Corporate REITs and all that. That's all like corporate real estate done. Um, Main Street real estate done. Stocks, I think, are going lower. Um, 
what what price is going to go high higher what what do you see out there as an asset go, that's going to go higher in price other than bonds exactly so that's... that would that would that would play into you were asking why would why would the market rush into bonds that will be the reason they feel the market must feel that we're going into a deflationary spiral right yeah but again or only... or the market thinks trump's gonna get his stimulus bill that he even campaigned about that 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 yeah that that's the other side of this mm. if a huge massive fucking stimulus bill gets thrown out there then yeah your theory is thrown out the window All right, any last uh, notes that you uh, wanted to <clears throat> share with us tonight before we wrap up? This was awesome. Really appreciate you coming on tonight. Yeah, I wanted to talk about agricultural commodities. Okay. <laughs> Which well, is well, odd. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Which is an odd thing. I mean, who wants to talk about trading corn and wheat? <laughs> corn, pork belly. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, this is, this is a new so, era. I've never talked about this one. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, so I, I got into trading corn last year. I lost a shitload of money, but I learned a lot of good lessons from this. So you're into cycles. You understand them. Yeah. Um, we're hitting into a cooling period. It's all, it, this is documented. Okay, I, I'm about to, I, I'm about to offend and piss off and trigger a lot of fucking people. But, you know, they're like, oh, 99% science, science, you know, science agrees that we're going into global warming. I'm sorry, that that's just more propaganda. <laughs> like, it it's another media propaganda shill bullshit. Like you gotta understand a lot of these narratives are pushed out there and they go for years. So this is, the, I think agricultural commodities are a buy here. Um, the demand is the same. Like you think, oh, the coronavirus is going to kill off all these. No, it's not. Like it's not going to kill off half the fucking world population. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the, the demand is still there. Crops are devastated last year. Massive flooding. It's going, it's, it's going to happen again this spring. A lot of the crops are actually frozen and left in the ground. And I learned, you know, through losing thousands of dollars and like following this is the USDA, they're a bunch of fucking liars. And I realized that the price action moves on what the USDA reports and how they reported crops from the 2019 harvest was crops left, left in the ground and rotting they reported it as on-site storage, which like inflates the numbers. Yeah, okay. You you see what I'm yeah. fucking saying here? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you know how the the GDP gets revised? Mm -hmm. Like they'll report, oh, this GDP, and then they revise it out mm -hmm. like quarters forward. USDA does the same shit, but they do it in September every year. Oh, so okay. last year's crops are going to be revised in September. And I, I am pretty certain that this year's planting season is going to be just as devastating, if not worse, as last year's. Well, you know what? I didn't know this. I, a caller from last week uh, weekend off the chain called in and told me that the Midwest had a crop crisis this past cycle. Yeah, I that's what that. I was trading. Yeah, oh, I, I got okay. into that. I, w I got into that and I was trading it. And then the USDA fucked me because they're pulling some Soviet Union shit on the numbers. <clears throat> um, 
I think the supply is falling off the cliff. A lot of our supply storage reserves and giant silos, they got flooded out and rotted out in the Midwest. That is known, but it's not priced in. Also, what's not priced in is solar cycles. I know that's very controversial. Listen, I took climatology. I studied studied paleoclimatology. There, there's cycle. Real. There's, there's my, cycle. My... There, like, there's cycles to this, and oh, I'm not trying to freak Lord. people out thinking their oh. food supplies, you know, at risk. It is though. But it kind of, but it kind of <laughs> is. It kind of is. It is though. <laughs> And, and, and to, add to, that, to add to that there there's been this is so crazy like this it seems like some biblical end of the time stuff because everything is coming to a head <laughs> like the but, four horsemen yeah, yeah, yeah dude yeah. <laughs> but you know supply chain shocks are starting to um, hear rumblings about that being an issue oh and dude then, i did i tell nothing. you about the port authorities I got insider no, on this. No, you didn't. Okay, so there, there's a dude. He works right next to the Philadelphia Port Authority. He told me, like, five weeks ago, he's like, yo, it's been empty. There's nothing here. He's like, the Port Authorities are completely empty. And I got a guy in Boston that works with the Port Authority there. It's completely empty. Like, no activity for like five weeks. Yeah, you and know, then, so, so a lady- <laughs> On top lady, of it, you have the, the jet streams changing because it's moving climate zones around. It, it's making areas that got a lot of precipitation become dry. And then areas that are dry are getting a lot of precipitation. Mm. Does that make sense? Like the, yeah, the like yeah. normally we have like a Northern and Southern big um jet stream that's wavy right but what's happening is it's like broken up and we have like two in the north and two in the south so our climate regions where our agricultural grow zones are at have been getting destroyed and it's a natural cycle it has nothing to do with like human activity at all Oh, I, because I, I, I because totally we've seen that. this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but the thing is, I've always been into science myself, you know. Uh, and, you know, just growing up watching Nat Geo and Discovery Channel and all that, like, we had ice ages. We had, there was no pollution in the cars running around then. We had, you know, the, the, the earth has he, has warmed up many times, millions of times in the, in the, in the past, so... We can't, this narrative where, you know, we're saying that global warming is caused because of all this petrol uh, oil usage. I mean, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure it adds to it to a, a percentage, but it's not, it's not the moving factor with this thing. It's not the main thing that's moving this. It's just another narrative for them to shill. Uh, I got to get your email or something so I can send you some images of graphs. Yeah. Yeah, like I'll going see, back, see. going back millions of years, mm -hmm. because with paleoclimatology is what they do is they go and dig cores right. in the seabed and multiple yep. and other and like in oceans, yep. and then they also have ice cores where they dig into that, mm -hmm. and then they also base it off like tree rings, yep. and then they can see in this area like holy shit why why was this tree almost dying getting no precipitation for a few years and then suddenly it's being like flooded and rotted out and then it comes back to like a normal period mm. yeah I, I don't know I think that's like one of the biggest things hid from humanity is the cycle of the climate on earth um, what, what, what would be the reason for that though I, that one I can't figure out I think because if people knew that there was devastating, chaotic weather that happens to the year, I think people's priorities would be different. Hmm. 
then people will realize we were actually in a simulation. None of this is real. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any any uh any la- uh, other I notes? think I think we're going I think commodity agricultural commodities is a buy okay. here. Okay. So we kind of list them all. I we think... got we got corn. What else? We got uh, wheat, we got wheat. cocoa, we got sugar. Okay. I think meat prices are going to start to go up. So this is no good. This is a this is a triple this quadruple is... whammy to the consumer. And then it also plays into the inflation theory as well. True. I mean, but without like like set aside the inflation theory, I think there's real devastating shit going on in the supply side. Yeah. And I think multiple. it's been built. I think it's been building up for two years. It's it's really hard to find. You can't find this on the mainstream media, mm-hmm. but if you go into YouTube and Twitter. And you just type in, like, type in Brazil flood December. Like, you'll see some scary stuff. Mm. And then what about like, the locusts? Like, yeah. What about the locusts? It was the locusts. <laughs> 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 oh, man. You know, that, you know, that's another thing I want to talk about with Africa is in desert Africa, it's starting to bloom in certain areas. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but back in Rome times, there they had a huge agricultural grow zone around like Egypt, Sudan, Tunisia. Like they, they had, they they could grow a lot of crops there, and then all of a sudden they can't anymore, and they got to import it all. Now we're shifting back to where they can start growing their things this is something i learned during my time when i was in the military because i got sent off to some weird places Mm -hmm. and there is a conflict going on in africa for land and they're fighting over deserts literally fucking deserts conflict with because because uh, they know it's going to be the new agricultural grow zone. That's why. So, so is, they is understand this, these fucking cycles. Is, is why this, do you think this, China's doing the, the I, what is it, the Belt Silk Road? Belt. Yeah, yeah belt, that bullshit. So, uh, that's all that ask. is the premise, the, all that, the premise of it is off of these climate cycles. I'm okay. not shitting you. Okay. It really is. Wow. Wow. Like, I, I know people that are Chinese, that have told me this mm. off the record, that yes, <laughs> they need to sustain their population and their society. And they know that climate is shifting back to where it was thousands of years ago. Mm. So you have the mainstream media telling you, oh, all these volcanoes are erupting because you're driving SUVs. Oh, all these floodings and mudslides are happening because you're driving SUVs and using plastic bags. No, it's a natural cycle Mm -hmm. that's happening. Wow. Well, there there you have it, people. We're going to have Jane Bond come back on soon to give us updates on her on her analysis and thoughts very uh on point smart individual and uh, i want you guys to definitely make sure you hit that like button on this if you want to see her back on show this video some love and uh yeah jane bond thanks a lot for coming on tonight this was an awesome awesome kicking in session one of my better ones to be honest with you so um, oh thanks i enjoyed it yeah thank you thank you so uh, again that's it for today ladies and gents we're gonna rock out to this ice cube today was a good day we out of here people holla looking in my mirror not a jacker in sight and everything is all right i got a beat from kim all right that was the end of part two wow hope you guys enjoyed that one uh again make sure you like share and subscribe i'm out of here holla